This is our supplemental video for our manuscript titled Arthroscopic Femoral Osteochondroplasty for Cam Type Impingement, the Trough Technique. In this video, we will highlight the surgical steps and technical pearls with a case example. These are our disclosures. This is a 23-year-old female with a year and a half history of left hip pain. The arrows highlight the area of the cam lesion with the thickened sclerotic cortex and the out-of-round appearance seen on the films. I perform all of the osteochondroplasty through an interportal capsulotomy by visualizing through the anterolateral portal and placing my working instruments through the mid-anterior portal. Once central compartment arthroscopy is completed, the traction is led off the extremity and the cam lesion is identified. With the leg in extension and internal rotation, the head-neck junction is identified and marked out with electrocautery. I like to use electrocautery to remove all of the soft tissue overlying the cam lesion as I find the bird to have improved tactile feedback during the osteochondroplasty with the soft tissue removed. As always, when using cautery, a steady flow of saline should be maintained to avoid heating the joint. Intraoperative fluoroscopy can be used to help identify the cam lesion and the amount of resection needed to restore adequate offset. With the extremity in extension and slight internal rotation, the trough is begun at the superior location of the cam lesion. I typically step off the defined edge of the cam lesion by 8 to 10 millimeters, using the width of the burr as a guide. I find it important to continuously visualize the edge of the head neck junction so that the trough can be placed parallel to the defined edge. In order to access the inferior aspect of the cam lesion through an inner portal capsulotomy, the hip needs to be flexed in order to relax the capsule and bring the inferior cam lesion into the working space of the inner portal capsulotomy. The trough is connected between the borders of the superior and inferior aspects of the cam prominence. With the hips still in flexion, the burr is then used to reshape the medial side of the head-neck junction. The cam lesion is rounded out, taking very little bone on the femoral head side and removing more bone as we approach the trough. The hip is slowly brought out into more extension as we work our way more superiorly. It is important to get comfortable with manipulating the position of the hip to gain visualization of different areas of the cam lesion if you are going to be working through an inner portal capsulotomy. As the hip is brought back into full extension, the superior aspect of the cam lesion in the region of the pistol grip deformity can be assessed and rounded out. The bone is typically softer in the superior region of the cam and using the burr on reverse can be helpful in preventing over-resection or gouging. Once the medial rounding is complete, bringing the hip into deep flexion with your dynamic exam can be helpful to confirm an adequate cam resection. The hip should also be checked in abduction to assure clearance superiorly. Intraoperative fluoroscopy can be helpful as a second check to evaluate the depth of resection. Once happy with the rounding of the head-neck junction, the hip is once again flexed to relax the capsule and bring the femoral neck into view. This bone is planed down to restore the head neck offset. Once the bulk of the bone has been removed, the burr can then be used on reverse to quickly buff the area of the resection to smooth down the edges of the cam resection. Intraoperative fluoroscopy in multiple planes is then used to confirm an adequate resection. It is standard for me to repair all interportal capsulotomies with four to six stitches. Here are our post-operative frog leg and false profile films obtained six months after surgery.